Okay, this is a tutorial video on special right triangles. Uh, keeping in mind that there's going to be two of these, so I'm just going to talk about the first one, and then we'll transition into the second one. Uh, the first special right triangle is an isosceles right triangle. So the two legs are congruent, which also means the base angles are congruent. So both of these angles are going to be the exact same thing. Just like in this example here, both of these angles would be the exact same thing. So if you're trying to kind of work through this, 180 is the total of the three angles of a isosceles triangle or any triangle. And I already know that one of the angles is 90 degrees. So I subtract 90 from that and I've got 90 left over. Well, <clears throat> if both of these angles are congruent, then I'm just going to split that 90 between the two of them. So divided by 2 is 45 degrees. So both of these angles are 45 degrees. So isosceles right triangles are also known as 45, 45, 90 right triangles. So both of the acute angles are the same. They're 45 degrees. And the two legs, which are the sides that form the right angle, are congruent. So here you see both are x. And so if you do Pythagorean theorem here, x squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse 2 squared. So that's 2 times x squared equals 4. Divide both sides by 2, and x squared is equal to 2. So now I'm going to try to get x by itself, so I'm going to need to take the square root of both sides. Now keeping in mind that x squared and the square root are going to cancel out, and I'm just going to be left with x, and I end up with plus or minus the square root of 2. Keep it in mind that we're only going to use the positive case because we don't want any negative distances when it comes to practical application. So I've got the square root of 2 ended up being the length of these two legs. All right, if I take a look over here in my right triangle, I've got a 45, 45, 90 right triangle again. If one angle is 45, the other had to be 45 because these are congruent. Um, or if you thought about it in terms of 180 is 90 plus 45 plus I don't know. So 180 is 135 plus I don't know. Subtract 135 from both sides. And you get 45 is that missing angle. So that's another way of kind of thinking about and confirming that this is an isosceles right triangle. Um, so that means the legs are the same. So this is L as well. So that means L squared plus L squared is equal to H squared. And that's just one more confirmation that what we're looking for um, can be found. So uh, 2 times L squared equals H squared. Divide both sides by 2. And leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared divided by 2. And <clears throat> then I would take the square root of both sides. And what you'll end up seeing here as we continue to get a little more complicated with the algebra is that L, and again, we're only using the positive case here, not the positive and the negative. We would get h squared over square root of 2, which is going to be h over the square root of 2. So L was equal to the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2, or if I wanted to get h by itself, I could multiply both sides by the square root of 2, which then gives you the relationship that the hypotenuse is the length of the, of the leg times the square root of 2. And that's the relationship that you need to find. So if that was a little bit confusing how to get there, this is the relationship that we were trying to basically prove that we have. Is the relationship between a 45, 45, 90 right triangle's legs and its hypotenuse is whatever the length of the leg is, the legs are congruent. So if one leg is 8, the other leg is 8. But whatever that length of that leg is, if I multiply it by the square root of 2, that gives me the hypotenuse. No matter what I have, that's the relationship, and we just verified that right here. So let's get that written down into your notes. Okay, 45, 49, 590 is special. The formula is 4590 is that the hypotenuse equals the leg times the square root of 2. 
that's what you want to keep in mind. So again, we verified that earlier in the video, and now you can use that to help you figure out. So here, got a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, so that means that X has to be 25 as the legs are congruent because it's an isosceles right triangle. Now we said whatever the length of this leg is, that's got to be the hypotenuse as long as I multiply it times the square root of 2. So that leg times the square root of 2, that's what my Y is. Now, square root of 2 is an irrational number. So if I want an exact answer, I would leave it like this. If I'm a little uncomfortable with that and I'm doing some sort of real life application and I need a distance, I could go ahead and type that into my calculator and get the decimal approximation of what 25 times the square root of 2 is. But for this example right now, you could just leave that as 25 times the square root of 2. Just going to do one more example in number 3 here. As you can see, this is a 45. So we earlier had a similar problem where we figured out if this is 45, and this is 90, when you add those together and you subtract from 180, you get 45. So this is another 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And that means that this is an isosceles right triangle, so both of the legs are congruent. So now, what I'm telling you is that the hypotenuse, which we know is 12, is whatever that leg is times the square root of 2. So then now I could solve by dividing both sides by the square root of 2. Okay, now, and we'll go back to earlier in the year when we said, all right, we rationalize so that we don't have to divide by a square root. So what we would do here is we would say, okay, how do I get rid of the square root where I square it? So I'm going to multiply it by itself. But if I multiply the bottom, I've got to also multiply the top so that I don't change the value. So then that would mean that 12 times the square root of 2 over 2 is what I end with which I could then simplify the 12 and the 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 square root of 2 would be the length of my legs, provided the hypotenuse of my isosceles right triangle is 12. Or transitioning to the second of our special right triangles, and I'm going to try to find the missing angles A, B, and C, as well as the length for L and H in this scenario, as well as X. Um, and just kind of walk you through some of that, and that'll help us stumble onto the second of our special right triangles. If you'll recognize the largest triangle here that I'm circling, that is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so even though they give you that these two angles that are congruent at the top are 30, if you put them together, you get that this entire angle is a 60 degree angle. This entire angle is a 60 degree angle. So that means... I've got an isosceles triangle where this angle across from the base is a 60 degree angle. Well, that means B and C are my congruent base angles. So 180 minus 60 leaves me with 120. And since B and C have to be congruent, we're going to do 120 divided by 2, and that will give us 60. So each of these angles are going to be 60 degrees. And now I've figured out what B and C's values are so far, so far. Now I want to break away from the bigger triangle and just concentrate on this triangle to the left. I know two of the angles. I know that angle, I know that A, B, and 30 have to add up to 180 degrees because they're the angles of a triangle. So 60, sorry, not 60, 30 plus 60 plus A degrees is 180 degrees. 90 plus A is 180. Subtract 90 from both sides. And now I've just discovered that A's measurement was 90. So now this is a right angle. Now linear pairs tell me that this is also going to be a right angle because they have to add up to 180. And if 90, 180 minus 90 is 90, so both of these angles end up being congruent. Now all linear pairs aren't congruent, we know that. But when one of them is 90, then you get that special scenario. So what we've arrived here is that both of these smaller triangles making up this isosceles triangle were 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangles. So a 30, 60, 90 triangle where the two acute angles have a 1 to 2 ratio and then you have the right angle. And what we end up with is a very interesting scenario where we have the same pattern of behavior between the short leg, the long leg, and the hypotenuse. 
So we're going to use that pattern to help us figure out what's going on. Okay, I'm going to clear out all the work that we've already done and just leave my markings so that we can concentrate on the sides. Okay, so we've discovered that these are two congruent triangles um, and they're going to be congruent by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, or uh, you could even go angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, according to what we've proven. So that means that if this piece is X, this piece right here is also X. If their total is 10, then half of 10 is 5. So both of these smaller pieces are 5. So now what we're going to talk about is the relationship between the short leg, the long leg, and the hypotenuse. Well, the short leg, the long leg, and the hypotenuse have a very, um, a very nice relationship or at least predictable relationship in that what we can do here is uh, use this idea that the large triangle is actually ends up being an equilateral triangle. Remember, we figured out that that was a 60 degree angle and that was a 60 degree angle. Well, if you put these two angles together, that's a 60 degree angle. Well, equiangular is also equilateral. So if this piece is 10, this is 10, and this is 10. All right, well, now I've arrived at the first part of our pattern. The short leg is equal to one half of the hypotenuse because you see that 5, which this leg is shorter than L, that sh the short leg is half of the hypotenuse, 5 is half of 10, because we cut that third side in half because each of these triangles were congruent. So the short leg of all 30, 60, 90 right triangles is half the length of the hypotenuse. Now, what would I do to figure out what this piece is right here? Well, I could do Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus L squared, that's my long leg here, should be equal to 10 squared, and that's what we figured out is the length of that hypotenuse according to this triangle here. So 25 plus L squared is equal to 100. Subtract 25 from both sides. L squared is equal to 75. Now what I'd like to do is take the square root so that I get L by itself. So the square root of L squared is equal to the square root of 75. And that's going to leave me with L is equal to, and again, we're only going to use the positive case here. Um, because we're dealing with triangles. So the square root of 75, which ends up being the square root of 25 times 3. I don't know what the square root of 3 is, but I do know what the square root of, of 25 is. That's going to be 5, and we'll leave the 3 underneath the radical. So the length of that longer leg was 5 times the square root of 3. Well, that 5 is familiar because that's the length of my shorter leg. So what did I do to the short leg to get the long leg? I multiply by the square root of 3. So the second piece of our pattern here is the long leg is whatever the short leg is times the square root of 3. The long leg is whatever the short leg is times the square root of 3. I'm going to write that down, and you can pause your screen and, it, and write it down. And here are the rules written out for you. A little bit further down on your notes is this formula. Uh, table right here if you would like to pause your screen and write that in this can also help you for my folks who like formulas okay we're going to finish with an example here i've got a 30 60 90 right triangle i know it's a 30 60 90 because it's got a 30 degree angle here and a right angle there which leaves me only with a 60 degree angle here the short leg is the is the side across from the 30 degree angle the smallest angles across from the smallest side so that means that the long leg is actually across from the 60 degree angle and the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So using our angle relationships here, we know that the hypotenuse is two times the length of the short leg. And we know that the long leg is whatever the short leg is times the square root of three. Well, I have two variables in this equation here, so that's not going to be the one I want to start with. So I'm going to concentrate here on y. All right, so divide both sides by the square root of 3, and I get 18 over the square root of 3 equals y. I've got to rationalize in an effort to not have a radical on the bottom, and that's going to leave me with 18 square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which reduces, sorry, over 3, which reduces to 6 square root of 3 for my y. 
Then I substitute y in here to figure out my hypothesis.